Wag the Dog is a political satire in which a political fixer and a movie producer try to divert the attention of the public from a sex scandal involving the President of United States a few days before the election by creating a fake war narrative against the nation of Albania. Right off the bat, this film might come across as just over the top, but in an age of dirty politics and parties making accusations against candidates from different parties to meet their agendas, this kind of damage control does not seem out of the realm of possibility. Dustin Hoffman stars as the movie producer assigned the task of creating a fake war and Robert De Niro stars as the political fixer who is trying to stop the allegations from ruining the president's election chances. They are both great in their respective roles and their back and forth is very entertaining, especially Dustin Hoffman who gets so engrossed in creating a fake war that he cannot bear the fact that they have to keep it confidential. Barry Levinson's direction is fast and he gets right to the action and makes characters' interactions more engrossing than they are. The writing is clever and every step the plan takes seems plausible and every roadblock that the characters encounter in executing this plan will keep the audience as to how it plans out. A big recommend. The screenplay by Hilary Henkin and David Mamet was loosely adapted from Larry Benhart's 1993 novel, American Hero. Budgeted at $15 million, the box office return of the movie was $64.3 million. Pack the Dog was released one month before the outbreak of the Lewinsky scandal and the subsequent bombing of the Al Shifa pharmaceutical factory in Sudan by the Clinton administration in August 1998, which prompted the media to draw comparisons between the film and reality. The comparisons were also made in December 1998 when the administration initiated a bombing campaign of Iraq during Clinton's impeachment trial over the Lewinsky scandal. It was made again in the spring of 1999 where the administration intervened in the Kosovo war and initiated a bombing campaign against Yugoslavia which coincidentally bordered Albania and contains ethnic Albanians. The movie was well received by critics who praised the direction, performances, themes and humour. The plot as we can loosely talk about shows the president caught making advances on an underage girl inside the Oval Office less than two weeks before the election. Conrad Brian, a top spin doctor, is brought in by presidential aide Winifred Amis to take the public's attention away from the scandal. He decides to construct a fictional war in Albania, hoping the media will concentrate on this instead. Brian contacts Hollywood producer Stanley Motz to create the war complete with a theme song and fake film footage of a photogenic orphan. The hoax is initially successful, with the president quickly gaining ground in the polls. When the CIA learns of the plot, they send Agent Young to confront Brian about the hoax. Brian convinces Young that revealing the deception is against his and the CIA's best interests. But when the CIA, in collusion with the president's rival candidate, reports that the war has ended, the media begins to focus back on the president's sexual abuse scandal. To counter this, Motz invents a hero who was left behind enemy lines in Albania. Inspired by the idea that he was discarded like an old shoe, Brian and Motz ask the Pentagon to provide a special forces soldier with a machine name. A sergeant named Schumann is identified around whom a POW narrative can be constructed. As part of the hoax folk singer Johnny Dean, Willie Nelson records a song called Old Shoe which is pressed into a 78 RPM record, prematurely aged, so that listeners will think it was recorded years earlier and sent to the Library of Congress to be found. Soon, large numbers of old pairs of shoes began appearing on phone and power lines and a grassroots movement takes hold. When the team goes to retrieve Schumann, they discover he is in fact a criminally insane army convict. On the way back, their plane crashes en route to Andrews Air Force Base. The team survives and is rescued by a farmer, an illegal alien, 
who is given expedited citizenship for a better story. However, Schumann is killed after he attempts to rape a gas station owner's daughter, seizing the opportunity. Mott's stages an elaborate military funeral for Schumann, claiming that he died from wounds sustained during his rescue. While watching a political talk show, Mott's guest frustrated that the media are crediting this president's upsurge in the polls to the bland campaign slogan of Don't Change Horses in Midstream, rather than to Mott's hard work. Mott states that he wants credit and will reveal his involvement, despite Brian's offer of an ambassadorship and the dire warning that he is playing with his life. After Mott refuses to change his mind, Brian reluctantly orders his security staff to kill him. A newscast reports that Mott had died of a heart attack at home, the president was successfully re-elected, and an Albanian terrorist organization has claimed responsibility for a recent bombing. The title of the film comes from the idiomatic English language expression, The Tail Wagging the Dog, which is referenced at the beginning of the film by a caption that reads, Why does the dog wag its tail? Because a dog is smarter than its tail. If the tail was smarter, it would wag the dog. The political phrase wag the dog is used to indicate that attention is purposely being diverted from something of greater importance to something of lesser importance. The idiom stems from the 1870s where in a local newspaper the Daily Republican called to mind Lord Dundreary's conundrum the Baltimore American thinks that for the Cincinnati convention to control the Democratic Party would be the tail wagging the dog. The phrase then and now indicates a backward situation in which a small and seemingly unimportant entity controls a bigger, more important one, that is, the tail controlling the dog. It was again used in the 1960s. The film became a reality the year after it was released due to the Lewinsky scandal. Days after the scandal broke, Bill Clinton ordered missile strikes against two countries, Afghanistan and Sudan. During impeachment proceedings, Clinton also bombed Iraq, drawing further wag the dog accusations. And with the scandal still on the public's mind in the March 1999, his administration launched a bombing campaign against Yugoslavia. In January 2020, after the airstrike, U.S. assassination of Iran's General Soleimani, various references to wag the dog made the news. Well, we need, still need to see what happens in the future, but till then, watch the movie. It's a very, very much recommended stuff.